Uh, this spinal cord tutorial is going to be focusing on the principle of segmentation. So our objectives is to describe the segmental organization of the spinal cord by answering these questions. How many cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral vertebral and spinal cord segments are there? Why are there seven cervical vertebrae but eight cervical spinal cord levels? How does the termination of the spinal cord at the L1, L2 vertebral level affect its segmental organization? Our second objective, describe vertebrosegmental discrepancy. What element or elements are there discrepancies with? Okay, first question, how many cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral vertebral and spinal cord segments are there? All right, part of this is review. The vertebral columns divide into 33 segments. You've got seven vertebral levels in the cervical region, 12 in the thoracic region, five in the lumbar region, and then five in the vertebral, in the sacral region, and you got these four tiny little ones in the coccygeal. So therefore, the vertebral column has these 33 segments. Now the spinal cord is divided into 31 segments. And this key, now we're looking at the sim similar picture, but it's a spinal cord. So there in the middle, we saw those segments. So we've got eight cervical spinal cord segments, 12 thoracic spinal cord segments, five lumbar spinal cord segments, five sacral spinal cord segments, and one tiny little cute coccygeal spinal cord segment. So spinal cords divide into 31 segments. But there are seven cervical vertebral levels. There they are. And there are eight cervical spinal cord and spinal nerve levels, as shown there. So what's the story? Why seven cervical vertebrae, eight cervical spinal cord levels? Well, to answer this question, let's go back into embryology. Part of the occipital bone that's highlighted there in, origin, in orange is actually the first cervical vertebra. It's formed from this one somite that the sclerotomal or superior portion of that sclerotome went up and formed part of this base of the occipital bone. And as a result, that's C1. So as a result, C1 through C7, and so they actually do. There's their C8 cervical vertebrae. And then so if there are eight cervical vertebral levels, and there's eight cervical spinal cord levels. Hooray! But we didn't name them that way. So what we really refer to them as seven cervical vertebral levels and eight cervical spinal cord and spinal nerve levels but that's why there seems to be discrepancy, but there isn't. Okay, let's change gears. Okay, so here's a picture of my son Gabe's, and he's a cute little guy with his little uh, Pinewood Derby car, and I remember when he was a little kid, he came back from school one day and said, Daddy, I can write my name, and so watch. So he started writing his name out on a piece of paper, and notice what happens as he continually starts writing his name and he starts realizing, hey, I'm running out of room. So look what happens to the size of his letters. They get smaller. Well, here we've got the vertebral column. We've got this eight cervical spinal cord segments and then 12 thoracic and five lumbar and five sacral and one coccygeal. See what happened? Just like my son Gabriel wrote his name. Cervical and thoracic levels, many of those levels are the same size, but down in that caudal region, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. All right, what are the elements of vertebral segmental discrepancy? Now, this vertebral segmental discrepancy has a handful of different meanings, so I'm going to talk about my understanding of what it means, okay? Vertebral segmental discrepancy deals with spinal cord levels, vertebral levels, and spinal nerve levels. So let's take a look in the cervical region. There we have a coronal section through the pedicles, and you can see the spinal cord in the middle uh, labeled its segments, and then on the right side in white, the vertebral segments. And so spinal cord levels, there's C1, and it has then a vertebral level associated for C1, and then you have a spinal nerve level associated with C1. So there we have all three levels. Now what does this vertebral segmental discrepancy mean? Well, in the cervical region, notice that the nerve exits above its associated vertebra. As we go all the way down each of these segments, now we get down to C7, but what happens at that C8 level? Now the C8 spinal nerve courses above the T1 vertebra. So there's one of those weird discrepancies because we have 
named eight spinal cord levels in the cervical region, but there's only seven cervical vertebrae. That C8 nerve exits below the C7 vertebra, or another way of saying it, the C8 spinal nerve courses above the T1 vertebra. The take-home point in the cervical levels, spinal cord and vertebral levels are pretty adjacent to each other. They're pretty close. But spinal nerves exit above their associated vertebra. All right, let's take a look at the thoracic region. There's the T1 spinal cord level and the T1 vertebral level, and there's the T1 spinal nerve. Take-home point in the upper thoracic levels, spinal cord and vertebral levels are adjacent to each other. We're going to see that part's going to change a wee bit. But from here on out, all the way down, all spinal nerves exit below their associated vertebra. We'll see that happen all the way down. Now, Let's watch as we descend these thoracic segments. So just watch as we see the T2 spinal cord, vertebral, and spinal nerve levels. As we continue to descend, watch what starts happening between the spinal cord and vertebral levels. They're now starting to separate. So the take-home point in the thoracic level, spinal cord and vertebral levels start to separate. We start seeing that they're no longer beside each other. There's this vertebral spinal cord segmental discrepancy begins and spinal nerves start out horizontally but then they start going obliquely and then down here look at they're now coursing vertically in this vertebral canal all right let's now take a look at the lumbar level continue watching what happens to the that vertebral segmental discrepancy gets bigger and bigger and bigger meaning the take-home point in the lumbar spinal cord levels, spinal cord levels are more superior to their associated vertebra. Spinal nerves course vertically, and they are now becoming that cauda equina in the bottom of the vertebral canal as they course below, cor going to and coursing below their associated vertebra. In the sacral level, let's watch again this vertebral segmental discrepancy, S2, S3, S4, and then S5. The take-home point in the sacral spinal cord levels, spinal cord levels are more superior to their associated vertebra. And again, those spinal nerves course vertically, becoming part of the cauda equina, to course below their associated vertebra. And I say spinal nerves there, I should be more specific, My pardon, pardon me. It's really the ventral and dorsal roots that are forming in here, because the spinal nerve, the union of the ventral and dorsal roots, happens within the intervertebral foramina, as they exit the vertebral canal. So in review, the spinal cord has a segmental organization like the vertebral column, except there are seven cervical vertebral levels, eight cervical spinal cord levels, and then vertebral segmental discrepancy means that spinal cord, spinal nerve, and vertebral segmental levels do not necessarily correspond spatially with each other, and this is because of that unequal growth that occurs between the developing vertebral column and spinal cord. Thank you.